So uh, the last thing in this section is um, the absolute value. So um, this, I think, is a little bit more likable. Yeah, and short. OK, so absolute value. Um, absolute value, something that you, you, you know, think you know, but you don't, don't know well enough yet. Um, you'll find that we'll, we'll get to know this notion very well. Um, so recall the definition of the absolute value. Call the definition. So we give the sort of algebraic definition. Um, uh, for any A in the reals, uh, the absolute value of A is defined to be A itself if A is greater than or equal to 0 negative a if a is less than or equal to zero. So this number is called um, the absolute value of a. So um, we have another, uh, so we maybe um, Important definition: um, the distance. We'll write use this to denote the distance between a and b. The distance between a and b is defined to be the absolute value of the difference uh, for any a and b in the reals. The absolute value of the difference. Right. So you take the difference, and then you take the magnitude of that difference. Right. The magnitude of that difference is the distance between the two points. Right? You want your distance. Um, you know, your, right? Distance. The way you normally think of distance is a positive, positive idea. Right? It's it's this far from here to there. Um, okay. So um, yeah, this course is about analysis and uh, you know. Uh, Analysis is based on the notion of limit. Limit is based on the notion of things getting close, right? So in order to make precise what that means, you need this notion of distance. Okay, so absolute value is really critical. Okay, so a bunch of properties of the absolute value. Um, first, that the absolute value is always um, greater than or equal to zero, right? Um, for all a is R. Okay, and the proof is obvious, right? Proof obvious. Right? Um, right. If, if A is positive, then the absolute value of A is A, which is positive. Right? If A is, is negative, then the absolute value of A is negative A, which is, which is greater than or equal to zero. Because a being less than a zero, you multiply it by something less than zero, you can flip the sign. Mm -hmm. So now we can now we actually can flip the sign now that we have these these properties of ordered fields. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Property number two: that the absolute value of a product is the prop product of the absolute values again for any pair of numbers. This one, uh, the proof is a little bit, uh, it's not particularly interesting. Um, you break it up into cases. So you say, okay, case when both these guys are, are positive, right? You say, okay, well, then you know that A, B is greater than equal to zero by, by you know, the appropriate you know, property that we've just proven. Um, and so the absolute value of A, B equals a, B, but that's the same thing as absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. Right, since absolute value of A is A, and the absolute value of B is B. And so you break it up into cases, it's, it's not particularly interesting, okay, but it's true. The absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. Um, Property number three, 
is the important one. So it's the triangle, what's called the triangle inequality, that the absolute value of a sum is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. Okay. Um, and uh, the proof of this is kind of a funny one. You say, okay, well, look, um, A lies between negative the absolute value of A and positive the absolute value of A. And the same for B. B lies between negative absolute value of B and positive absolute value of B. Okay. So if we sum some of these things together, we see that um, negative uh, absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B is less than or equal to B plus B, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Uh, no, that's good. That's good. Okay. So, um, what you see, you could also um, multiply this thing through by negative. Yep. Ne so, why are we allowed to now start adding within inequalities, or do we have to kind of? That was that was okay. Um, that w that's okay because that's just one of the properties of ordered fields, right? Okay. Um, that if you have like a, like I know there was one where if you have like A is greater than or equal to B, then, and then like A plus C is greater than or equal to B plus C. Yeah. But this seems like a little bit different because it's like. Really in different numbers. Yeah, it's almost like a containment statement. For like Feels different to me, but maybe it's not. Okay, so um, okay, but you can do it in pieces. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I think yeah. So let me let me. So you've got this a plus b, right? You know that a that b is less than the absolute value of b. Right, B is less than the absolute value of B, so I can, I can, um, you know, so I, if I add A to both sides, I get this, this statement. Okay, so you right. just do it really slowly. That's right. That's right. So you, and then, you <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then you get there. Okay, you okay. have to do that for both sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I had that in my notes, and I said, why do I have to do this? And then I see that I actually should should have done. Okay. Okay. So, so, um, so we get that uh, oops, a plus b oops, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. But we also get from this left half of the statement that um, uh, negative a plus b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Multiplying this guy by negative one, which is okay. You get this, but we know that the absolute value of a plus b is one of these guys, right? It's either a plus b or it's negative quantity a plus b, right? So the absolute value must, whatever it is, it's going to be less than or equal to the sum. Yeah, all right. Sorry, I'm confused with the so statement, like those two inequalities that we have following the... We have this is less than or equal to this, which is less than or equal to this. Mm -hmm. So that gives us the first statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have this left-hand inequality, which we multiply by negative 1. That the sign, the sign reverses. We get negative a, a, a plus b is less than or equal to negative negative uh, absolute value of a plus absolute value. Okay. 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 Okay.
everybody all right? Okay. Um, last thing about the absolute value is a corollary. It's a corollary. It says the following, that the distance, so given any A, B, and C in the reals, um, the distance from A to C is less than or equal to the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C. Okay. And this is this is actually where the term triangle inequality comes from. Right? If you're in space, you've got these points A and C, you've got this point in the middle. The distance from A to C is smaller than the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C. This is actually true in, in higher dimensions. Um, okay, so uh, this is a corollary. That means it's a consequence of, of the previous. So, um, uh, so let's just translate. We want to show that the distance from A to C, in other words, the absolute value of A minus C, is less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B plus the absolute value of B minus C. Does anyone see why that's that's immediately true? Anybody see why that's just the triangle inequality again? Triangle inequality, triangle inequality says the absolute value of A plus B is less than the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Right? So just take capital A, take let capital A be A minus B, capital B be B minus C. then we're done, right? This says that the absolute value of A minus B plus B minus C is less than equal to the absolute value of A minus B plus the absolute value of B minus C. Right, but that's what we want to show. Triangle quality is sort of a useful, useful kind of trick. You're trying to show that two things are close to each other, right? But you don't know how to do that directly. However, you're able to find some sort of intermediate point from which A is close, A and C are, you know, from which both A and C are close. So maybe you, know, you, you can't control the distance between A and C, but you're able to find some intermediate term that A is close to and B is close to. And so, you know, if that would give you that A must be close to C. Right? If, A is, if these guys are close and these guys are close, well then these guys are close too. Right? If this is less than one and this is less than one, then this thing is less than one plus one. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're trying to do? The same thing as trying to inequality, just put in other words? Yes, yes. So this is, this is, this is also called the triangle inequality. So can you use the triangle inequality to prove that? Yes, because what we're proving, you know, oh, we're proving this. Okay, yeah. We're not proving the triangle inequality. Okay, yeah. Right? We're assuming the triangle inequality. We're getting this, okay. this, this thing. Yeah. Um, and it's also called the triangle inequality. But there's no circular, yeah, yeah, there's no yeah, circularity yeah. here. This isn't the same statement. And, and if you say that A, B, and C are all different, then could you say that it's not less than or equal to? Can you say that it's less than? Right. So. Um, Right, so if you come back here, um, you see that uh, it's going to be equal if these guys are the same sign. Right? If A and B are the same sign, you have equality. If A and B are of opposite signs, mm -hmm. then you have inequality. Right? 
so yeah, you can you can tell there's something you can say about when you have equality and when you don't have equality. But if they if you have something like this though, you know, and they're on a line, right? If you have something like this, then you have equality, right? But if you have something like you have something like this, then you have inequality. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Okay, so I guess uh, I don't want to get into the next section. Um, the next, so uh, let me just to give you a preview. The next section is, is something called um, the completeness axiom, okay, or the least upper bound axiom. And what this is, is a property of the real numbers that distinguishes it from the rational numbers. Okay, it is that which the real numbers has, has that the rational numbers doesn't have. Okay, so it's, it's the distinguishing quality of the real numbers. Okay, so um, you might want to take a look at it because it's, this is, uh, now we're really stepping into, you know, like new, new ground, new, new territory. So, um, yeah, and this is important, important new territory. So take a look at it before the class. Is that section four? Section four. Okay. 